Hello, in this video today I'm going to be taking out the exhaust camshaft position sensor and then testing it and putting it back in again. The engine is an N43. Let's get started. We have to open up the bonnet to begin with. And it is located just under here. It's not hard to get to, but we do have to undo a couple of things. First thing we're going to undo is this here, and it's got three Torx 20 screws just here, here, and here. Unlike me, you should be wearing gloves when you do this. Now take this out here and loosen the hose here. There we go. And that will just lift straight out. All right, so we have a little 10 mil bolt just here. We just want to undo that one and there's also a 10 mil nut just underneath here and it will just give us more access to this little position sensor. So I'm just going to undo this one first. Again counterclockwise. And I'm going to do the rest by hand so I don't drop it into the engine. There we go. And now to give myself a bit more room, I'm just gonna undo the two electrical connectors for here and here. This is the intake solenoid, and this is the exhaust solenoid. And now there's a little nut just underneath here that we need a spanner for. It's here, just above my finger. Right, I've loosened that off, so I'm just gonna use my finger. So I've loosened that off, so I'm just gonna use my fingers. There we go. Next up, I'm just gonna loosen up the connector here, the electrical connector that goes to the intake position sensor. We're doing the exhaust one, but this is the intake one. So I'm just gonna lever up that little bit there and then pull that out, like so. And now all of this can be moved. And now it gives us access to this one here. And just here we have a little five millimeter Allen key or hex key. And that's what's gonna undo the little exhaust position sensor. So this is five millimeter. Now I've got the battery still connected at this moment in time. I'm making sure I don't short anything in the car, but the keys are in my pocket and the ignition's not on. So the Allen key is now in there and I'm just gonna go this way. So that way to loosen it. Now, when you get to the end bit, make sure you grab it by hand so you don't drop it down. So that's it there. Now, the electrical connector on this one is broken. I think it would be easier to probably just take it out while still having the electrical connector on it, and then you can see what it looks like and you can use a screwdriver to take it off. So first things first, I'm just gonna try to wiggle it. There you go, you can see it's wiggling already and that will hopefully make it loose. And if I bring it over to here, it will give me more chance of pushing down on it because when it's there, it's all flush, it's hard to get onto. But if I bring it here, I should be able to push down. Now a bit of oil will come out. So I'm gonna use an old rag underneath it to try to catch some of the oil. And now I'm gonna push down on it. There we go. Obviously you should be wearing gloves when you're doing this. So I'm just gonna clean the oil off the sensor. And now it will give you more room to maneuver and take out the electrical connector so you can see what's going on. Now this one here is actually broken. 
basically what you want to be doing is you want to be getting your screwdriver and you want to be putting it in this bit here and then lifting up the tab you can see the little tab here that is supposed to go on and then it will come out but with this one it's only held in purely by the little rubber waterproof washer there so this is the camshaft exhaust position sensor just here and what happens is we have three contacts in there and basically at the end of the camshaft here the exhaust camshaft we have a position sensor and that is imagine like a disc with bits taken out of it so it's not perfectly round it's got indentations on it and the indentations are shaped differently and this is like a hall effect sensor that knows when it can see an intact bit of disc and a bit of disc with the position taken out of it with a section taken out and because they're all different on the way round, the engine knows the brain knows where the position of the camshaft because of this here so if it was a perfectly round disc this would get the same reading all the way around but because it's a disc with bits taken out then imagine like pac-man yeah so when it's going round, all of this is the same but on the opening it's going to measure different so what we can do now is we can connect the electrical connector back up and let's try and actually test this to see when we put a screwdriver near it or a spanner near it will it give a different reading because look can you see it's magnetic yeah let me just get set up now unless your leads are very thin on your multimeter you're probably going to need something to poke into the electrical connector so I'm just using a couple of safety pins now there's three contacts on there and what I've done is I've put the positive off my multimeter onto the yellow wire which is currently the one at the bottom there and I've put the black lead from my multimeter on a safety pin that goes into the middle connection there which is the black so right now the orange isn't connected I've just gone black to the black middle wire and red to the yellow wire there and we're going to set our meter here to volts DC like so and you can see it's not reading anything so now we're going to go into the car we're going to turn the ignition on and we should have nearly five volts here when we touch the spanner on the end here that's going to mimic where the cam wheel is with the notches taken out of it and then we should get a different voltage reading so let's go in here i'm not going to turn the engine on i'm just going to put the ignition key in the ignition and i'm just going to do the start there but i didn't press the pedals so the ignition's on now And if you have a look we've now got 4.7 volts if we were to get our spanner and if we tap it on to here we should see that that voltage will change so i'm just going to go on here like so and if you have a look can you see the voltage has gone right the way down if i take it off right my leads just come apart it's very awkward here i should have really have crocodile clips let me just put that back in there obviously don't short anything together either so 4.7 volts again let's try, try to do it in one go here so 4.7 volts and if i go on there you should see that it will drop down there you go 0 0.02 take that away again and it should jump up to 4.7 there you go so you can see now how that knows where the cam is because it's getting different readings as it's turning and when you have bits taken out of it it's going to line up differently on that and it's either going to see a bit of metal or it's not going to see a bit of metal and then the actual brain will know where the exhaust camshaft is i'm just going to put it onto another couple of pins there just to see what readings we get on the other ones right now we've still got the black lead to the middle one but what i've done is i've swapped the safety pin from the yellow over to the orange so the red probe is now going into the orange there and as you can see we have 12 volts here now from memory i think when we go across it it's not going to make any difference so we've still got 12 volts so you can see it doesn't matter whether we're on it or off it we've still got 12 volts so if i take it off now we still have 12 volts right now i'm going to go between the orange one and the yellow one okay so we have the red probe onto the orange one and we have the black probe onto the yellow one so the two outer ones now there's nothing on the middle black connection and you see we have 7.2 volts and now i'm going to get this i'm going to put this on here like so 
so magnetically attached there now and we've gone up to 12 volts take it away and it will go back down to 7.2 let's get that in one shot so bringing it down touching it and you will see it will jump to 12 volts and then take it away and it will go to 7 point something is just one of my leads has come loose there you go 7.2 you get the idea so i'm not saying that that sensor is perfect but it's definitely given us a reading so chances are it's probably going to be okay it might be a little bit out of spec but it's definitely doing something right okay i think it's time to put everything back together but obviously if your ignition's on and when you put for example a metal spanner or a screwdriver on the end and you're not getting the same readings as me if they're not making any difference whatsoever then it may suggest that that position sensor's faulty. Now I actually know that this one isn't faulty so let's put it back together. So turn off the ignition and take out my key. I'm just going to root the little sensor behind this pipe. and I'm gonna push it home. Make sure that the little rubber washer's still on there, that little rubber washer there. And just clip it into place there. You know when it's home because it gives a nice little confirmation click. And uh, then we just gotta line the screw up. I'm gonna do it by hand. And if you just get the sensor so it's flush with the aluminium body here, so for example, don't have it like that, push it round until it's flush with there. Hopefully that will line up. I'm going to do it by hand to begin with. And that way then hopefully I'm not going to cross thread it. Now if you're worried about dropping a screw, you can always put a cloth underneath it. This one is a bit fiddly to get to. Right, there we go, that's going in by hand. And I'm only screwing into aluminium, so I'm just going to nip it up, just like so. All right, so the electrical connector's already in. Make sure it only goes in the one way. The tab that sticks out has to go into the bit that's got a bit around it. This one's broken, but the enclosed bit the tab will go into to lock into. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to do up the screw here, but we're just going to leave it loose for the time being until everything's seated. Or the bolt, I should say. So I'm just going to do this uh, again, just by hand to make sure it doesn't get cross-threaded. And I'm just going to leave it there for the moment. Now we have to put this on, making sure we don't trap this wire. So basically what we're going to be doing is make sure that this wire doesn't go behind it here because it's going to get trapped so take the wire and put this bracket on first like so so put the bracket on first then put the wire on after that so the wire has its own little plastic connector on just like so so you can see the cable's not going to get trapped now because the metal connector's on first and also the metal connector has a little tooth bit that goes in there like so. So we're now going to do up the little nut that goes just here on top of where my finger is. Again I'm just doing it by hand. And then nip it up with the spanner. Now I can do up this one. There you go. Now when it comes to these connectors here, you can see which way they want to go on. So look at the way they come down here and you can see that that's going to be the top one. And this is going to be the bottom one. Otherwise these would all be crossed. They would fit but they just wouldn't look, uh, they wouldn't look right. It's much easier to fit like this. Like so, yeah? 
so that's it there and then this one is just going to be with the notch again on the enclosed bit here it's that little bit sticking out there is going to be on this bit that has the extra bit of plastic so the bit that's sticking out is going to be on this side here and that just clips in like so right so that's home that's home that's home that's home and the connector is on here so we're ready now to put this bit back on it's going to put this bit in first and then worry about the hose afterwards so now put the hose on there we go and we just need to do each of these up now we're only going to plastic so i'm just going to nip them up So there we have it, as you can see the exhaust camshaft sensor is harder to get to than the intake one but it is still possible and by using a multimeter you can have an idea of whether it's doing something or not and if it's not doing anything then it might mean that that little position sensor has failed in which case then you can easily buy yourself another one and the problems may well go away. If this video has helped you out please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.